This is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the Mercury Corporation's uh, foot control pedal for the Singer Model uh, 237 Stella. And uh, I, I have seen now pictures online of other 237s with this pedal and some with the brown button pedal. So at first, when I got this, I thought somebody had just replaced the Singer pedal with this. But I've come to believe that many of the Singer um, 237s were sold with this pedal as the original equipment. It's the Mercury Electric Products Manufacturing Corporation made in the USA. It's a 1.2 amp, 115 volts AC or DC or less. And I'm, I'm sure it, oh, and it says here, cat, catalog number 704 foot, 705 knee. So uh, maybe it would fit in some cabinets and controlled with a knee lever. It actually see it looks in good shape and it and it gives a good control of the motor. I mean I can go you know slow it down pretty good if I want or get a faster or intermediate and put a propeller on it it might fly off because <laughs> there's no there's no strain on the motor. See if I I just hold it with my fingers. I can stop it from. But anyway, uh, let me unplug it so I don't forget that. I'm pretty sure it must be a carbon pile. It's 1970. Um, and it looks like it, it's going to maybe slide open on this back cover. I don't know. I, I guess some of the little uh, pads here were knocked off or worn off. I actually researched this a little bit and they made several different uh, styles of foot controllers for sewing machines and they and even this exact model came in a few different colors. Okay so uh, I see one end is crimped over here and one end's not. So I think I'm going to uh, try and slide it open here. We'll see. Oh, you know what? I've seen these depressions before. That's a usually indentation to prevent it from sliding open. Uh-huh. Okay. So let's see how I can... Maybe I can get something in there and work it open. <clears throat> I, I'm just very curious as if this is going to have a, a single or double carbon pile like the button controller. It, is it going to have that same ceramic housing and, and so forth for it? Um, See if I can push that up. So if you push it up a little bit, you have to get it over these. Uh, there. You have to get it over these bumps, and then they put another one here in the middle. So I can see a little bit now the wiring connections and a block. Huh? It's great. Kind of. It looks like uh, ceramic. It's not that heavy. I'll see when I figure out how to take it out. I see one screw here that mounts the block. Okay, and now way up in here I can see the end of that screw that mounts this uh, block. But I need to get the rest of it open here to, to, uh, to be able to see what's what's the story 
So let's see if it will. Can I use this to lift it up a little and pry it off? Oh, maybe. So I'm just trying to lift that a little bit and get it up over. Get these edges over the cover. There. At least it's metal. Oh, this is a little bit different than what I've seen before. Let me get the light over here. So this is a car. Uh, I'm sure this is carbon in here. We'll take a look. But it looks like to me a little a little carbon contact sticking out the top of this. And I guess this is ceramic. It feels like cement. Isn't that weird? But then when you push the when you push the actual pedal down, what's moving is this lever. Let's see if I can. What moves is this lever, and it pulls the metal contact. And here's the here's like the copper brass one that pulls in and makes contact with the carbon piece and then here's the wiring here looks like we have to take this off to be able to get to the carbon stack and this piece is riveted in the contact piece here I what's interesting is I don't see much of a way to adjust this um, like on the other clamshell or button style I've been able to go in and clean them up and and adjust them um, but I don't see much of a way this is just riveted here this piece here is uh, like a bake like plastic or a, it's a piece of plastic or something here so let's let's take this uh, you get a screwdriver here and let's take this block out because the terminal connections here screw in from the other side of the block because I can see the end of some screws here and then this have this one mounting screw is all that I see so let's see if we can back that out and uh, take a look at this block okay that's in there real good there we go so there's a self tapping uh, like sheet metal screw So now we have to be careful here because we don't want to bend or break any of this. Um, let's see, I think if I, kind of like a key in a hole there, I think if I turn it a little, maybe I can get that. Whoop, there we go. Pull this out and get some slack. Let's look at the case just real quick. There's a very strong spring up in here, just a wound spring with one with a, a tail that comes off on the top cover, and the other tail of that spring is up here pressing against the pedal, and it's very strong. Uh, and then this is the little control. When you push that pedal, it's pulling this little uh, hinge lever back and that hinge lever is connected to the contacts here oh there see and there's the little uh, carbon pile connector you can see a little bit of carbon burn there not bad mm-hmm
and this is set in just with a couple of uh, pins sets in there and then this lever is riveted on because I don't I don't see a there's it's a rivet it's not a screw so uh, one lead comes in here to go to the contact and the other goes through the carbon pile and here's the two screws uh, holding the contact bar <clears throat> these look like they're going to be brass I can see by looking at them that somebody's been in here before because the head of the screw is a little chewed up and they probably just used a regular screwdriver and if the screws are a brass or a brass alloy they're probably a kind of soft I, I don't well I don't know maybe they just did that at the factory installing it I don't know but usually when I see screws in that kind of condition it's because somebody's taken them off with the wrong size of screwdriver uh oh yeah I got carbons coming out here and everything let's take a look at these real quick and then I'll set them aside so kind of a brass alloy and you can see that these are chewed up here the slots and it's very common see that top left bottom right somebody put a a um, tapered screwdriver in there and it was uh, smaller than the screw head so they've damaged that screw head a little bit pretty common here is the contact and see that little brass cover right there that's coming from the contact that's what's holding the carbon stack in here because as soon as that popped out some of the little carbons came out here and they look uh, oh see here's the first one which is normal it's about twice two or three times as thick and it's blackened so this has got some uh, carbon burning and stuff on it. So it's going to be kind of that same. I think this is the bigger one. So it's interesting there's only a single pile that's like half of what's in the button controller. But it, it gave pretty good control. So I don't think the carbons are in real bad shape. I think they're just uh, got deposits and stuff. But let me get them up here and uh, I don't have an open um, button type Singer foot controller to see how these carbons compare in size. Just from memory they look a little smaller to me but Let's go ahead and dump these out. Uh -huh. This is a this is a funny. I swear it feels it feels more like a concrete than ceramic, but it's got something on here. I can't make out what it says. It's maybe the K. KCL, KCL, like a company name. Maybe I can look at it with a magnifying glass later. So here's the main contact carbon, which is very similar to the to the uh, button type foot pedal carbons, just a smaller size. And here is all of the uh, carbon disc from the carbon pile so again this this has been affected Let me get some light over here right 
so I'm going to have to go through, I think, and check and clean all these. If you haven't seen my foot pedal uh, restoration videos, I'll put links to them at the end of this video and down in the description. But that's the best way I found to clean them is just drag them on a textured paper towel. I'm going to get my gloves on, but I wanted to show you here's the other end one and it's got quite a bit of deposits on there. So it would definitely need to be clean and probably on both sides, right? Makes sense. And here's a couple of the little thin wafer ones that have the deposits on both sides. These you got to be a little bit more careful as you clean them. So I'm going to uh, wash my hands and then put on some gloves. And I'm going to have to polish these uh, carbons all up. Right, and then I can put them back in. Now, see in the middle of these, these look great. Look how look how shiny and new they look. So, so that's why I said that it the the device was working well. So it's just going to be some carbons at either end, I think. You know, you get like two or three deep from the ends that 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 get this um, buildup of the carbon uh, deposits. And I think that's from, you know, electricity coming in, electricity leaving. So when I get these all cleaned up and ready to go back into this, <laughs> um, then I'll come back and we'll finish up the video. Okay, I have all of the uh, carbon discs polished up and, and all the burned marks, all the black uh, carbon uh, removed. Whoops, there's one side I missed. And there was just a, a few, like I said, kind of on each end. And that's, um, that's fairly normal. When you see damage all through or are cracked or a lot of powder and stuff like that that's a sign of some very um, um, very bad damage in there and you might want to think about replacing the carbon discs at, at that point uh, for for the contact uh, here Remember there was a big black spot uh, there on that. And for the burn black spot here at the back of this that, that keeps them uh, held, held in. I just uh, used some Brasso to polish that off. Came right off. And uh, this is not uh, pitted at all very 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 minor discoloration now these can uh, especially this type of a contact can get pitted very um, very much and if it's a very bad uneven surface you can uh, heat up your solder and put a very thin coat of solder on the bad spot and grind or sand it out smooth again if if it's very pitted because you want you want the best contact possible for for these type of carbon pile or carbon stack and then you have to rebuild the the pile or stack and this elongated kind of nipple shaped one has to go in first uh, drop it down in there because at this end of it that is what this makes contact with right so then there's uh, 
the other end piece will be this one that's um, kind of double or triple thick. That will go in last up here. And then other than that, there's a 72 of the little thin discs. And you have to just uh, restack them in there. And I, you know, tried to pile them up before, like in stacks of 10 or 20, and lift the stack and drop them in. And uh, they're so slippery, I haven't had much luck with that. So what I've done over the years is just, you know, drop three, four, five in there. And I just make sure that they lay flat. Uh, that you don't get one uh, up on its uh, side and then stack some more on top of that because when you get to the end you'll you'll see <coughs> excuse me you'll see that you don't have room see that that kind of stacked up on me a little so let me put some of those out you, you'll find that you don't have room to uh, put any more in so it's a little bit uh, meticulous in in the other button, geez, these are really stacking these little ones. Let me start over here. Um, in the Singer ones that have these, if I have uh, a very old unit and it's got uh, burned and... Come on out of there. burned and uh, cracked or damaged uh, I've been able to take out a few carbons like if there's two or three damaged on each side because I can adjust the the contacts and stuff but on this one I still don't see any way to adjust the contact on it so if if you have to remove some you could try it if some are just flat broken or uh, very jagged and burned around the ends you probably want to remove that and you could put it back together and try and if and if you get good control from it go ahead what i'm concerned is if you have too many that are damaged you're going to have to uh, find new replacements and on the bigger Singer ones I found um, a replacement that came in a cylinder f for the clamshell type and they're a softer carbon that I believe are made in India they're not as good as these old uh, vintage carbons that are that are uh, kind of hard and shiny but I don't know if you could buy replacements of this size. So if you wanted to keep your um, vintage pedal, it's almost like you're going to have to buy another used one and take it apart and cannibalize some of these carbon discs out of out of one to get you know enough to make a complete unit like I said there's 72 in here so I mean you're and what that would cost you in the time I, I don't know I looked at these online today and there was a couple for sale the exact same color and everything uh, with cords and they were anywhere from 22 to 25 dollars plus shipping so it was almost, it was about 30 bucks. And for less than that, you could buy a new electronic uh, foot pedal, which gives you excellent control. And you could just take the wiring out of this and put it into the new electronic. That takes five or ten minutes. And then you could just abandon this one, which uh, would probably be my recommendation at that point. But if you're just experiencing what, what typically happens when they get out of adjustment or they have a lot of these uh, uh, deposits on the discs or the contacts, 
is that you, you start pushing on the foot pedal and you might get a little hum, but you, nothing much happens and you push and push and you're trying to get the sewing machine to get going. And it's called, and it's typically people will say, I go from zero to 60 in one second, <laughs> you know. And that's because the, the carbons are, are resisting too much, not letting the electricity go through enough to turn the motor over. And at some point, when the foot pedal's fully depressed, you're making a straight contract contact through the wiring, you know. And then uh, you, you're bypassing the carbon. So that's why you, you, you hear people say, I go from zero to 60. So if you're experiencing something like that, that, uh, you know, you've really kind of got to put the pedal to the metal to get anything to happen. Uh, or if you're having c uh, control issues, like you can't sew at a little bit slower speed, um, you know, maybe you can go medium or fast, but when you try and slow down, it just kind of stalls out on the motor. Opening up this foot pedal and cleaning, cleaning the contacts and cleaning any of the carbons that you see a lot of deposits on. And like I said, I just rub them on a paper towel. I tried different things. You don't want to get them wet and you definitely don't want to get any oil on these. Um, but if you, you clean them, clean the contacts and the carbons are not uh, cracked or broken in half and stuff, you can uh, put them back in here like this, restack it, and then try it. And the chances are y you may be satisfied. It, you, you may have gained a lot of control back um, over, what, over what you had before you cleaned it, you know. So that is definitely, whoops, I got the wrong screw in there. That is definitely worth uh, trying before you would uh, necessarily replace the whole unit. So I've got those uh, cleaned up and restacked in there. And I'm just going to see if I can put this thing back together. Now, I showed you before I took it apart that I still had good control on this. And there was just um, kind of burned carbon on the con metal contacts and on the first two, three, or four uh, carbons on each end. And by the way, after I cleaned those end carbons, I kind of spread them out in the whole stack. I didn't put them back in on the end because I've, I've you know, they're worn out a little bit. So they're going to be a little bit thinner. So I figured they've, they've had their stress over the decades. I'll put them spread around a little bit and put fresh ones on the end. But you need that one that's like a nipple here to come through for the contact. And you need the one that's double or triple thickness on this end. Because that, that takes the brunt of the electricity. Okay, so... I've got my contacts clean. I've got the, the disc clean. Now I want to put this back in here. And let's see. I've got to kind of figure out a way to get this. Let's see. Because it's going to pull that back. It's going to pull this little arm that way. And I want it to pull the contact against the lead carbon. So I think if I, maybe I'll keep that cord sticking out some. I'll try putting this back in. Mm, see, it's going to have to end up like that. So I'm going to try and, and put it back in at an angle like I took it off. And see if I can't get this back on going to have to go like that, like that, and like that. So I think, I, I think I'm doing this. I think I got the right idea here. Get a little more slack on the cord and see. 
you see how this has these this little these little notches Oop, let's see if I can get that up there see the little notches towards the rounded end those have to slip through and lock around this pull tab so it's going to pull back it's going to fold that's down so I put the side with the nipple on there and let's see if I can turn it like like this at an angle in there sorry I have I have never worked on one of these before so I'm we're learning together there There, like so. Right, because then when I when I put it in and I push the pedal, it's going to pull that back against the unit. So I got it right. Now let's pull out the cord here, down to the strain relief. This this little metal horseshoe with a piece of plastic in there around the cord. That's a strain relief. So the cord. Uh, won't get get pulled off of the block and uh, <clears throat> I I guess this is probably some kind of ceramic it just doesn't have a glaze like the singer ones do maybe that's why I thought it was some kind of a cement type because it's got that surface but then uh, if I think about the back side of a glazed ceramic tile it's got this rough texture and I've seen them white and gray and red so now there is a spot it's hard to look through here to see the hole for the screw because there's not much much light getting in in underneath here but I should have showed you this before. Maybe I can tilt this up. You see this part that sticks out here? There's a hole in the cover right there. There's the screw hole. Let's see if I can get some light. There's the screw hole right there at the end of my finger. And this part that uh, sticks out right here. It sticks out farther than anything else. And it goes into this metal hole and if you stick your finger up under here you can feel the end of it so th if you line up that protruding one with the round hole here then your screw hole will uh, more than likely be lined up so with all that explanation I got this off so let me let me put it back on there. See, I kind of put it at an angle like that. There. And then flip it down in like so. Pull out my extra cord and then see if I can move it around. and find the hole <clears throat> but I'm really really close to that right there I think I'm just a little crooked I know I've got this part right because when I push on the pedal it does pull it down into this if I could stick that down and there that will go through maybe okay that goes through the big hole and I see it sticking through the hole in the metal cover so I, I have to be pretty close to lining this up so I'm going to drop the screw in there and see if I can get lucky and uh, 
end up in the screw hole, which I just did. Now I'm not going to tighten it 100% because I want to make sure I... When I took it out, it was nice and lined up evenly here, parallel to the edge of the cover. Right? Wow, that looks good. So, <clears throat> you can try this at your own risk. I'm going to plug it in and just don't touch any of the contacts, but see if I have it uh, connected and working properly. So the more you compress that carbon stack or carbon pile, the less resistance to the electricity. And with, with less resistance, more electricity goes through and the motor can run faster and faster. So let me unplug that since I'm sure I got everything in there in the right position. Then I'm just going to snug this down. Now holding that ceramic, I already feel it's warm. I felt the temperature change. <laughs> and by the way, the slower that you sew, the more resistance. So the warmer this um, ceramic housing and the whole foot pedal are going to get. So if you're very so slow uh, sewing, you're going to feel this get warm and warm and hot. Uh, if you're fast a sewer, you won't notice that quite as much. But if you, you know, it's normal for this to warm up and even heat up. So if you experience that, that is not necessarily um, a problem. All right, now we've got to... I've got to get this, um, let's see if I can get some of this stuff out of the way here. I've got to get this cover back on here. Mm -hmm. And this little notch out is the, is the straight off end that goes towards the cord end of the cover. So it is going to slow, uh, uh, slide on. Okay. And then when you, when you get resistance, it's because those bump outs are there. But they're angled. So you just have to treat them like a little ramp and keep, uh, keep pushing so that they'll go up and over the end of the cover. And that's what keeps the cover uh, there. So I got the first set over, right? Remember when I first opened it and I could get back to here? Okay. Now I'm going to keep pushing or bumping and, and see if I can get the last. I wonder if I just did it like that and pushed down on the desk. go so I'm nice and sealed tight all the way around there let's plug it back in and uh, oh wait a minute you know what I'm, I'm looking that that um, spring in there you'll I, I don't know if I can get more light down in there it's hard to get light in there to see You can kind of see it there. It's just a, a wire. It's a heavy wire, spring wire, that's coiled around a post, like I said. And then the post is riveted in, so it can't be removed or adjusted. One tail of the spring rests against the top of the cover. The other tail of the spring is resting, resting in here. 
on the bottom of the pedal and uh, I noticed some kind of squeaking so I thought I'd just put a little bit of oil across that uh, spring across there and just little tiny drops across the spring and at the end of the post and up here where we got a little metal on metal I doubt if it's on the floor and you're pushing it with your foot and sewing I doubt if you're gonna notice the squeak too much unless you're like me <laughs> so let's plug it back in uh, well let me let me yeah okay well it definitely got rid of the squeaky on the spring uh, let me plug it back in and we'll go again here now yeah actually I, I even have a little bit more control over um, it's starting to move the motor just a little bit earlier but before I kind of go ha had to go past slow and then back up a little to, to maintain a slow and and even just with the cleaning that I did it's easier to start it slow if you needed to okay I'm, I'm really happy with that so I think for the actual foot pedal I don't know these are put on with the rivet here I don't want to take them off yet I'll probably go to the hardware store and they make a lot of these rubber feet and rubber bumpers for electronic equipment and I'll probably pry one of the well let's just take it off and and look at it because you know if there was two up here or two down here I wouldn't be bothered so much but the way that there's two on one side I figure either it was mounted in a bracket with a knee pedal bracket attached for for sewing in a cabinet I don't know why those got off of there but let's let's go ahead and pry these off and because I'll probably take one to the hardware store and get the same size of a rubber type of foot and a lot of them are peel and stick and uh, yeah these are hard and dry a lot of them are peel and, and stick and uh, either that or I use the E6000 craft type of glue where you can group it works real good for gluing plastic to metal or rubber to metal but you could use like Gorilla Glue too and uh, it may not have a hole uh, many of them will have a hole for a screw so you could just put your your uh, cement or glue there and put your new one right on over it um, if it doesn't have a big enough a screw hole to go over your your little rivet here then you could enlarge this very easily by just taking a like a metal drill bit and twisting it through to enlarge so that would be part of the process too would be to replace these uh, rubber feet um, yeah see how see how hard they they're very old yeah see that one's even worse so I'm lucky I got the one off hole so that I can uh, take it to the hardware store and uh, and get four like this or even taller would be okay I just don't want them thinner or they won't fit over the little uh, rivet there you know and then I can just uh, glue them on and then they'll be very nice all new 
so that's what I can tell you about the um, Mercury Electric Products Manufacturing Corporation Catalog 704 foot, 705 knee foot controller that came on my model 237. Thanks for tuning in for that. Come back and see me when you can. And uh, right at the ending slide here, I'll put some links to other foot controller rehab series that I did on a, on a couple of the Singer foot controllers. Take care. See you next time.